Chaos in the streets of one village around Hula in eastern Syria last Friday. These images, which Al Jazeera cannot verify, are of a gunfight right in the middle of a residential area. This man is called to one home, where he finds the first casualties of what has become known as the Hula massacre. Over a hundred people, including children, were killed. The governments accused armed gangs of being behind the attacks because the victims refused to join the opposition. That's in contrast to the testimonies of several survivors. My mother yelled at them, why are you taking them? My brother and my uncles. Then the military went in and my mother was afraid because they were pointing their guns at her. They would shoot her. They shot five bullets at her. Then they shot my brother, one here and one in his back. Then I was covering myself. He came and took the cover off me. Then he shot at me and it came here. He survived by pretending to be dead and says he clearly remembers the attackers. How did you know that they were the army and not gangs, for example? The tank was outside. They came out of it. I saw them. How many went into the house? Eleven. Some of them wearing army fatigues. Another group was in civilian clothes. They were bald, with beards. Shabiha. And as the idea of a possible military intervention gathers steam, countries like Russia say they won't back it saying mediation is the only solution. It's divided international opinion. They're uh, just vociferous in their uh, claim that uh, they are providing a stabilizing uh, influence. I reject that. I think they are, in effect, uh, propping up the regime uh, at a time when we should be working on a political transition. Civilian deaths will be the focus of Friday's emergency session of the UN's Human Rights Committee. Awaiting a peaceful outcome is a luxury, activists in Syria say, that people can no longer afford. Hadija Magadi, Al Jazeera.